Hey, thanks for stopping in. This is Tom, and this is Tom's Ready Room Show, and we're down in my workshop again, playing with some antennas, the same ones I had set up uh, in a previous video, except this time I'm going to try to use my Texan PL880 radio, and uh, I'll tell you why in just a second, um, but I want to tell you a little bit about this radio. This, I, I've had two of these. The first one I got had a lot of problems. I sent it back with a lot of problems getting it sent back in exchange for the newer version. Uh, this was hmm, six months, eight months ago, so there may be newer ones out now as far as the version. And the original problem was it, it did not receive single sideband very good. It was kind of garbled and doing strange things. The newer one I got was a little better, but it still doesn't work perfect on single sideband. So I don't use it that much. Um, but it does have one advantage in that for S meter, it has a numeric value and it also has a signal to noise value. Both of those values you want as high as possible. The one that I want to use today is a signal to noise, of which I want that number to be high, meaning the signal is much higher than the noise threshold. Now, how accurate this radio measures that, I have no idea. But we're going to try it anyway and see if we see much difference between these two antennas, one being my little homebrew antenna, which is just a, a long wire with some coax feed in. Nothing special about that. It's about 40 feet long, and it's heading north, excuse me, south, west, northeast. That's what it's heading. The other one is the in-fed um, antenna that was sent to me for review. It is 50 feet long, and um, it is heading northwest, southeast, that direction. And both of them are about 15 feet off the ground. So, we're going to try it out, and I'm going to zoom in on this display so you can hopefully see the numbers too. So, let's try the old zoom here. Zoom, 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 zoom. And we'll move around and find a display. Okay, there is a display. Let um, me turn the radio on. And the camera's moving. I forgot to tighten it down. Okay, there are two numbers up here, or two sets of numbers, each having two digits. The one on the left side is the signal strength in DBI units, I believe it is. Anyway, some funky units. The other one on the right is the one we're interested in, which is the signal to noise ratio. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can zoom even a little more so you can see those numbers up nice and close. Right there. Okay, so I'm not on any particular frequency right now. Let me flip the viewfinder over so maybe I can see what the camera is pointing to. And oh, I'll move my little card up so I can reach it. And here we go. So we'll turn the volume up. Geez, you gotta remember how to use this. Okay, and so we're plugged in right now. Uh, go back. This is my, turn the volume down for a second. It, it's now connected to the switch. And in the previous video, I described this mess I've got for doing the testing, which is not the configuration you'd want to use for normal shortwave listing. It's got too many adapters or anything. But anyway, so I'm got it now selected. I've got my little random wire antenna selected. And we're going to tune... Um, 5 megahertz, I can remember how. Here we go. Turn the volume up.
pretty bad this morning. You can hear the ticks, but there, it's a lot of noise now. So anyway, the readings I'm getting right now, and I can turn the volume down, and of course the readings are still going on, and they're being updated continuously, so they're changing. So right now, it's reading a signal strength of about 40, and a signal to noise ratio of 0 to 5, which that's a pretty low number. That's not a very good number, so that's that's indicating, and I don't know how accurate it is, it's indicating there's a lot of noise there. And so this is my antenna, and which is what I've, I've seen on my other testing with the other radio, just listening, it seems there's a lot more noise on my antenna. Now, we'll switch, and of course, conditions are changing rapidly. We'll switch to the infed antenna. Okay, the signal went higher and the signal to noise ratio went higher. It was about three to five, now it's 18 to 20. So that's implying that what I was hearing as far as noise was true. I'm getting more noise on my antenna and less on the other one, the infed. And I'm getting a bigger, better signal. Now there's there's so many variables here, I couldn't begin to count them. The cables, the adapters, the direction of the antennas, you name it. But with all that in mind, it's pretty obvious right now that the signal to noise is better on this infet in general. Now you can see some numbers that it's going down to zero. So that signal and the noise level is kind of wavering. And again, it's a ratio of the signal to the noise. So I could have higher noise, but if I get a strong station, that ratio will be higher, which is better. So let's try 10 megahertz. Lots of noise there. This is on the infed. The signal and noise ratio is zero, dead zero, never rising. You can hear if I shut up for a second. Noise, noise, noise. Now my computer's off, which was giving me noise before, it's off. I got some lights on, which I can briefly turn off, and it doesn't help. So that's true noise. The signal level is 29 to 32, but it's all noise, so the ratio is zero. Not good. Let's go up to 15 megahertz. Oh, lots of noise again. Signal noise ratio is zero. Now, it is 7 a.m. in the morning here in Florida. So that's the time. It's oh, a little overcast, but that's about all. So let's go see if we can find some other signals. Oh, by the way, while I'm here, we're at 15 megahertz. I'm on the infed. I'll switch to my antenna. The noise, I mean, excuse me, the signal level went down. The noise level is still basically zero. So no change there. It's so bad that both of them are reading the same. So let's go down to 9 megahertz and work our way up. See if we can find a good signal. Turn the volume up. Okay, at 9.44 is a signal. 
and pretty weak it's in there but it's pretty weak it's showing um, 30 to 35 signal strength with a signal noise ratio of 0 to 7 on my antenna we'll switch over to the infed much stronger just listening the signal now is uh, 40 to 47 the signal noise ratio is 10 to 14 mosquito I don't like mosquitoes um, we can switch back and forth here quickly keep your eye on these two numbers I'm on the infed antenna right now and I'm switching to mine notice the signal to noise ratio went to zero it maybe gets up to a seven every once in a while we'll switch back to the infed we're getting a five to six right now there's a zero there's an eight it's fluctuating of course because it it is kind of a weak signal so let's tune some more and then we'll call it quits so you can find a real strong signal. A lot of signals in there, but they're really weak. Darn mosquito in here. There we go. Okay, this is probably this is probably coming out of Tennessee in the United States. Nine point five eight zero. And right now we got, we're on the beam, I'm excuse me, the beam. <laughs> we're on the infed antenna. And we're getting a signal strength of 50 and above. We're getting a signal to noise ratio of, it's bouncing around quite a bit, 17 to 25. They went down to four there. It's all over the place. Strong, strong signal. Very clear. So let's go down on the volume and I'll switch to my antenna. Signal level has dropped. The signal to noise ratio is 25, 20, 18, 18, 17, thereabouts. We'll go back to the infed. Signal level has gone up to the fifth, mid 50s. The signal to noise ratio is 12, 10, 24, 25. So it, it definitely, these two indicators definitely indicate that the infed antenna is doing a much better job on both signal strength and signal to noise ratio, which is the signal to noise ratio number is the number that's most important when you're listening when you're receiving and so this is gives me an indication of that number how accurate this number is from this radio I have no idea just kind of look at relative numbers um, again we got a lot of variables here the switch the connectors the cables they're all different so that could have some effect let me just for the heck of it one last thing I'll turn the volume back up Oh, I've got I've got a ground hook to the switch because I don't have a ground on the antenna end and I don't have of course this is running on battery so there's no ground here for the radio there's a there's a, a ground connection to the radio but there's no earth ground for the radio so I'm gonna, I've got that ground connected right now. Just for the heck of it, I'm going to take it off. And watch the meter. Yeah, I took it off. Not much difference. I'm not sure why that is. Um, I'm pretty sure this is a good ground that I'm using. Maybe it's not. It's a long lead. 
to get to the ground port it's probably 20 feet and it's uh, I think it's about 16 gauge wire that I'm using so it should be a pretty good ground so anyway that's the show if you enjoyed this show please give me a thumbs up it tells me I'm giving you shows that are of interest the next and not necessarily the very next show but the next thing I'm going to show you is my MFJ vertical antenna it's 31 feet long and I'm going to show it to you out of the box before I assemble it and then I'll put it up and I'll show you it installed and then we'll do some testing so thanks for watching bye bye I've got a hand here somewhere oh bye bye